Oh, hello. My name is Mara, and welcome to Books Like Whoa. So, today I have a video about series that stick the landing. They land the plane, they end well, basically, is what I'm trying to get at. Um, series that actually give you a satisfying ending. This is a more rare skill set than you might think. Um, I'm somebody who tends to have high amount of grace or patience for early parts of series. Um, like, I'll give the first few books some room to be a little wobbly, but I do expect, like, you to be able to wrap it all up in a satisfying manner. Um, and series that don't do that, I get uh, pretty annoyed with. So I thought that I would just go through like I was trying to think through and it, I had a hard time coming up with this list series where I feel like the ending like nailed it, it was really satisfying. Um, I felt like it was worth the journey it took you on. And I was inspired, of course, by the Kate Daniel series by Alona Andrews. It recently had its final book come out uh, at the end of August. And while it wasn't the best book in the series, it was, I think, a very satisfying conclusion, all things considered. Um, so I it was like, Alona and well, so I should just even just start. So Kate Daniels, Alona Andrews just knows how to end series well, like every series that I have finished from that team has ended well. So the Hidden Legacy trilogy. Now they find they got re-upped to write more of these so we'll see how things go from here but originally this was meant to just be three books and it ends really well. Um, also the Innkeeper Chronicles. I know they're writing a side story a side novel right now for um, the sister but current like the three book arc of the Innkeeper Chronicles like that was also very satisfyingly concluded. So Alona Andrews is like my model for like this is how you end things well. I haven't finished the On the Edge, that series, so like I can't say definitively all those series, but every series I've read from them, they like really end them in a very satisfying way. So that was sort of my inspiration. So I thought I would go through a few other series that I feel like really earn their ending and do a good job of like giving you some satisfaction by the end. Okay, so I'll start with a couple of kind of more like obvious ones. First of all, Harry Potter. Now I pretend that the epilogue in this thing didn't happen. Like in my head canon, that does not exist. That is just bad fan fiction that for some reason the publisher chose to append to this. Um, but the actual like last chapter of this, like the ending of this story, I think it's just, incredibly satisfying. I think it was masterfully done. This the seventh book is actually my favorite in the series of Harry Potter. Um, yeah, I just I think that this was a really appropriate ending that tied up things that needed to be tied up. Um, but didn't it, it didn't feel like the entire book was was trying to wrap things up, if that makes sense. I think sometimes where people go wrong in ending books, and actually we'll talk a little bit about this with the next one, I think sometimes where people can go wrong is where they try to give you a bow on every single like lingering plot piece. I don't think that's what you need to have a satisfying conclusion. I think you just need to feel like everything kind of came together and you're leaving the characters in an okay place. And I, I feel like that's exactly what this series did. Now for Lord of the Rings, I kind of went back and forth on this because I do think that Tolkien falls into that trap a little bit. The sort of like wind down of this book, the falling action of this book, I don't think is always the best. Like the sort of like road show they go on where they're like dropping people off everywhere and then like the scourging of the Shire or whatever at the end. I don't know that that was like entirely necessary, but I do think the like substantive piece of the ending of Lord of the Rings, and this is like a big honkin' trilogy, I think it's really satisfying. I think that the way the ring is dealt with feels very like kismet, very serendipitous. Um, and I do think that the ending with Frodo and Sam that you get after the sort of like dropping everyone off piece, um, I also think emotionally it leaves you in a really a, a good place. So yeah, I think that this one definitely earns its ending and sticks the landing for the most part, in my opinion. Okay, and then I've got three fantasy-ish picks and three mystery-ish picks for you. So the first one is Jacqueline Carey's uh, Agent of Hell series. This was a trilogy. The last one is Poison Fruit. And I think this is really underrated. This is um, paranormal romance, uh, urban fantasy, something like that, kind of in that area. Um, and there's always like a mystery plot in each book. Um, and I feel like this, this wrapped up things in a really satisfactory way. I think that there was a love triangle in this that was actually handled in a way that didn't feel like gross and clunky the way that a lot of them do. Um, and yeah, this was a really interesting world. I think it was wise of her to, to make it a trilogy, not to try to drag it out. Like, Anita Blake style. Evidently, I've never read that, but people are like, end it already. Um, she, she didn't drag it out. I think she picked appropriate sort of like macro conflicts for a 
trilogy and each micro book I think ended well and I think the third book was the strongest of the three. Um, so yeah this is sort of an underrated little trilogy I think in that space but I really enjoyed it. I actually need to read more Jacqueline Carey because um, I've heard she's just generally pretty great. Next I decided to go with something that is not a, a full ending. Um, so okay like this might be a little bit of a cheat but the Side Changeling series is being built in various like seasons almost so like the first season ended with shards of hope um and that's part of why i've not been able to gin myself up to get into the next season because i got a pretty like a very satisfying ending um of the first arc of this series so um yeah i think that this gives me hope that she was able to bring pieces together of the first 14 books in a way that felt really satisfying um and so that makes me feel like she is clearly like kind of plotting out enough in advance that she's going to continue to give us satisfying arcs in this world. Um, and I'm, yeah, I'm hopeful that this is going to be like a really long running series that will be really satisfying and that each season will have a really satisfying ending. And then another one that's a little bit of a cheat because in theory there's going to be a fifth book, but like every time I go to look for some kind of release date on it, there's like no evidence of it actually ever coming out. Um, and I think, yeah, this was in 2014. So like we're coming up on five years since the last one came out. Um, and I decided to pick this because I think this is a good example of an episodic series that there's four of them and that each episode was really satisfying. You did have some build from from book to book in terms of sort of where the world was going. Um, but that this was like, this was a series that never had a bad entry in it was sort of my thinking on this that all four of them are really good. And I would say I'd say that this fourth one probably is my favorite of the four. So in that sense, it was also quite satisfying as an ending. Um, hopefully she will someday get her her stars together and um, give us a fifth book and, and finish it out. But um, I think even if she didn't, this is a perfectly fine place to leave it. Oh, did I ever actually say what this is? This is the Iron Seas series from Mildred Brooke. This is steampunk romance, basically. Okay, and then three mystery series, two of which are YA and one of which is not. Um, the first one is a series I should talk more about on here because it was a, a quartet of books that I think were really, really good. It was called The Agency by Y.S. Lee, and they're historical YA mysteries. And the kind of premise of the first one, at least, is that it is um, a girl who is uh, biracial in Victorian London, um, who is a thief and she is about to go to the gallows and she is saved at the last minute by a boarding school that basically trains her to be a spy a for hire kind of like investigator person and it's a, a four book arc and there is there are macro elements happening so you're learning more about her backstory how she came to be orphaned like what that whole situation is there's uh, there is a love interest but it's never the forefront of the book so I wouldn't really call these romances per se I would say that there's a romantic element um, but yeah I think that it's a book that again leads you leaves the characters in a place that you feel good about it and answers the most important questions that it raised at a macro level. So I think that's actually a really great example of excellent YA literature. It's also, um, like I said, a biracial heroine. Um, so if you're looking for like Asian, Asian uh, heroines in Victorian London, YA, there you go. Then we have The Naturals. And in thinking about this, I'm gonna go ahead and say that I think behind Harry Potter, this is probably my favorite ending of a YA series ever. I just think that it's a really tight four book arc. Like I was talking about with the Iron Seas, I don't think there's a bad entry in the entire series. All four of them are really good. There's also like kind of an epilogue novella that's that's really good um, and makes me want more. She should keep going in that direction anyway. Um, but I just think that the four books that are in the series, all of them are really good. You get interesting resolutions of the character dynamics. There is a love triangle, but I love that it gets resolved like pretty quickly and that it it creates interesting character dynamics going forward. Um, the mysteries are always, I wouldn't say like riveting. I mean, they're YA mysteries, so it's not like they're super hard to solve or anything, but like they're competent mysteries that are interesting and, and are age appropriate for the audience. Like, I just think that this is fantastic. This is, this was sold to me originally as YA Criminal Minds, which I think is completely accurate. 
it's just really, really good. I would love to see more books in this world, but I think she did a great job of giving us a very satisfying conclusion in the fourth book. So like, yeah, behind Harry Potter, I think this is maybe my favorite conclusion of like YA type books that I've ever read. And then finally, I'm going to go ahead and say that I really like the way that the Poirot books end. Now I don't own that book. It's called Curtain. Um, but I actually was really moved by that book. I really enjoyed it in a way that I wasn't sure that I would, but I found it incredibly moving and incredibly compelling. So yeah, I feel like she leaves Poirot in a really um, appropriate way. Like she wraps up his story in a really appropriate way. I love that Hastings comes back for that book, which feels right. Um, yeah, I just think that I, for me, she she stuck the landing on that. I know that there's that that's a controversial one. Some people don't really like that book very much. And I can understand why. But for me, it really worked. So yeah, those are some series that I think nail the landing. If you are somebody who is a little trepidatious committing to a series because you're not sure you're gonna like how it ends. Like I just wanted to put put some thoughts out there of ones that I think do really like earn their ending. Um, yeah, there's nothing more disappointing than committing to a series and then it just sort of like wah wah kind of like peters out at the end. It's also really disappointing when series like go off the rails um, at some point because <laughs> um, there's there's some of the books I series that I really love when I thought about putting them on the list I'm like well, it doesn't totally go off the rails, but I wouldn't say that the ending's that great, or I don't know. I just feel like it is, it's kind of like a hard, like it's a unique skill set, and I think it's not something all authors really have like a firm grasp of. Um, and it's something I would actually really encourage authors to think more about if they're starting a series to to have a very clear clear end game in mind. I think that serves serves you really well. So anyway, um, just a side note on that, and yeah, I think that will do it. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below and I think that will do it. Hope you're having a really great day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye!